Picture this. You're coming home from work one day and you realize you forgot your lunchbox. You go all the way back to get it. And once you arrive, you realize you're the only one there. And as you enter the lunchroom, there's a body on the floor. Now, what are you going to do? This could happen to anyone on either side of the puzzle. Situations like these can happen at Walmart, uh, a hotel pool, uh, yoga class, maybe even your own home. A primary assessment is a series of steps with a main goal of understanding the situation better and getting help as soon as possible. Now, as a lifeguard, I think this is one of the most important things to know, and I believe everybody should know how to act in case of emergency. Now, this procedure uh, involves checking the scene, looking for responsiveness, and determining how to respond depending on if the victim is either responsive or unresponsive. Now, the first step in a primary assessment is determining if the room is safe. Now, when you survey the room, you want to look for anything that might have happened to the victim that could happen to you. For instance, the floor might be slippery, or maybe there's a gas leak. Uh, maybe there's a ledge that he tripped on. Uh, if, if it's necessary, uh, put on personal protective equipment or PPE to access the body and provide help. Now, after you ensure your own safety, you want to worry about the victim's safety. Now, the second step uh, to the primary assessment is to look for responsiveness. As you approach the body, ask questions. It doesn't matter what you ask as long as you get a response. And if he doesn't respond, tap, shout, tap, make sure he can hear you. If there's still no response, check his pulse by putting two fingers on his neck like this. If, when checking his breathing, you put his ear over his mouth and look for a rise in the chest. Um, and according to the Red Cross, this step should be done in under 10 seconds to improve the victim's chance of survival. Now, there are the third step has two different scenarios, responsive or unresponsive. Uh, if the patient is completely unresponsive, get help and call 911 immediately. Grab the necessary equipment uh, that you need, and if there's any bystanders around, ask them to assist you in grabbing the AED or calling 911. Um, if begin CPR immediately, and once you start, do not stop until the EMS come and show up. Now, when doing CPR on an adult or a frog like I have here today, you're gonna stack both of your hands. Okay, uh, you're gonna the heel of the hand is gonna go into the sternum. Okay, you're gonna lean, you're gonna lean over him, and you're gonna provide 30 reps. Okay, once you complete the 30 repetitions, you're going to give him two breaths. Using the resuscitation mask, uh, you're going to make sure his lungs fully expand and fully retract before giving him the next breath. Now for an infant, you're going to want to hold him like this, how he sits in your hand. You're going to take two fingers and you're going to give him CPR with two fingers. Go for 15 reps and then give him two breaths in between the 15 reps. And again, make sure you are doing this until the EMS arrives. And as far as AED goes, it will give you instructions as to where to put the pads, when to remove the clothing, and when to start and stop CPR. Now, however, if the victim is responsive, uh, you're gonna ask questions to either the victim or bystanders that might know what's going on. Um, you want to ask questions about his medical history, uh, medications that he's taking, allergies, signs and symptoms that he might be experiencing. Uh, also, look for devices or tags on his body that might give you an idea as to why he's reacting this way. Um, and do a focused examination of his body just to narrow down the options and to provide help. And finally, if there's a suspected head, neck, or spinal injury, Tell him not to move and call 911 immediately. That is very important. Now, these are all steps that will take care of almost any emergency you might face in the future. First aid is one of the most beneficial things to know, and I believe that everybody should become first aid certified. Uh, many casualties would be prevented and avoided if everybody knew what they were doing. Now, checking the scene, looking for responsiveness, and deciding what to do in case of emergency are all things you can do to save a life.